everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and it's time to leave no dye behind. Right here I have some Knit Picks Wool of the Indies roving that I pre-soaked overnight. I had pre-soaked this for another video that I was filming on the off chance I needed more fiber, and well, we're gonna dye it right now. And for our leave no dye behind, I have a mixture here that has a lot of dye. I think it's got red, it's got pink, there's a little bit of blue in here. There's definitely some yellow. Uh, yeah, a lot of different colors from a lot of different projects. And we are gonna use this to dye the fiber right now. I have actually no idea how much dye we have in here. There was some acid for sure, but a lot of the dyes were diluted with water when they were put into this jar. So I'm actually gonna go fill up the jar with eight cups of just plain tap water. You can see there's some residual color. And I'm gonna pour this over the fiber, which you can see is getting lighter as we're pushing some of that color out. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, this, is not gonna set that quickly. But now I want to add some acid and let's do uh, four tablespoons of white vinegar. And then we're gonna take this over to the stove to start heating things up. There is a chance we could see some color break in, in here. There are, again, a lot of different colors. However, I am expecting it to feel mostly pinkish purple because that's what most of the colors were that I added in. Uh, I have the heat because everything is cold on a little bit higher right now, but I will in probably 10 minutes reduce it to low so it can heat slowly for at least 30 minutes. But while we wait, please make sure you're subscribed, uh, give the video a thumbs up and turn on notifications. Well, this is not what I wanted. I reduced the heat to the lowest possible setting, but I wanted to show because, whoops, <laughs> uh, that happens. I heard it from the other room and came running in, uh, but uh, yeah, let me put the camera down. Normally I would have just reduced the heat, but I wanted to show that it was simmering because then editing Rebecca can say if anything else is going on, but most of the color is successfully in the fiber. There's like a hint of like a pinkish or yellow maybe in the water. So I'm gonna keep it on low for another 10 minutes because I've lost track of the timing on this because there's something going on in the other burners as well. But yeah, I think I'm just gonna leave it with the heat on low for another 10 to 15 minutes. All right, I am now going to turn off the heat and let this cool completely. Color-wise, I would say that this looks a lot like Darva Cabernet acid dye to me, which was absolutely a component of the mixture. But there was probably at least as much deep magenta and then a lot of other colors in there as well. So yeah, <laughs> but I'm feeling the Cabernet kind of vibes. But honestly, when you mix a lot of colors together, this is sort of where we end up a lot. Just look at the middle colors from the color mixing that I've done a lot of times. We end up with sort of like a muted purple is a very common sort of spot <laughs> where, where we land. But anyway, with the heat off, I'm gonna let this cool completely in the pot. It's gonna take hours, and at that point, any residual color should also bind to the yarn. And once it is completely cool, then we'll wash it. But I don't wanna agitate the yarn a lot right now with it hot. Let's wash this fiber. The dye bath is completely clear. And yeah, I'm very curious what kind of tonal variation we will have. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of some of this clear dish soap. And sometimes I will do a longer soak. Sometimes I don't. But let's go ahead and let this soak for five minutes just so that way we can see if we have any bleeding. All right, let's see. Good news, I don't see any color coming out of the fiber. Um, that's excellent news. So now I'm gonna carefully, very carefully rinse it. 
Um, and by, rinse, by doing that, I'm going to be filling up the basin again, letting it sit for like a minute or two, and then refilling it maybe one final time since it looks like there's still a little bit of soap left in here. And then I'm going to put the fiber through my skin dryer and hang it up to dry. Well, this turned out really fun. I love the tonal variation that we have in this fiber. Clearly, you can see that we have more saturated and less saturated segments to it. But we do also have a little bit of breaking. It is very subtle, and I'm not sure how easily I can pick it up on camera, but we definitely have some more yellow areas in a few different segments, some areas that lean a little bit more orange. It is extremely subtle uh, and in a very few places where it's more pastel, but I did want to point it out. I always like to fluff up my spinning fiber after I've dyed it because sometimes just through the washing there can be, I suppose it's some super slight felting that can occur at the surface and this just sort of breaks it up a little bit and will add to a like fluffier braid. Plus the process of drying the fiber just sometimes can leave it a little bit compressed and so uh, this is something I like to do. But you can see just like how easily <laughs> I can pull apart the fiber and here are uh, some more of the patches that lean a slightly more yellow. But again, that is very, very subtle. But as I'm doing this, I sort of want to talk about like why would you want to spin fiber that is so subtle? Like it's part of the fun of hand dyed fiber, getting something that is more wild. One of the amazing things of spinning this up is that there's so many different ways you could do it. You could break it apart into different color sections and create something that's more of a gradient. You could spin it as it is to create a stunning custom tonal yarn but also you will be able to get some barber pulling and variation if it's plied and things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to achieve if the yarn was already spun. And that is the big reason why I wanted to learn to spin in the first place because dyeing yarn is a lot of fun and there are so many possibilities and things you can do with the color. But if you start with fiber, then there are even more possibilities and things you can do with the fiber, including, you know, adding in some Donegal neps to make your own custom tweed. There are art yarns that you could create in ways that uh, maybe otherwise you wouldn't be able to find commercially. But just even in a more simple base, the ability to play with color and the ability to take something that would be gorgeous on yarn already, like if this was a skein of yarn with these tonal colors randomly through, that would be beautiful. It would knit up beautifully. But you can create a yarn with even more dimension in a way that the way that the variation of color could be more subtle in the final yarn and therefore in the final knit garment than it might be if this was the yarn to begin with. And so all of these factors are just it's really another layer to add artistry and to plan and play with color for whatever it is you want to create. And that's really a reason why uh, dyeing roving is fun. Of course, another side to this is spinning is a really, really relaxing hobby. It's very rhythmic, very peaceful, and a lot of fun. And so as an art in of itself, spinning is extremely enjoyable. And I have spun like things that are more solid and things that have more variation of color to it. And all of it is just really, really fun and just a really nice, almost meditative quality to the rhythm of it. And if spinning is something that you've never tried before, I recommend giving it a shot. It isn't an expensive hobby to start with. Unspun fiber doesn't have to be expensive and you can get a drop spindle for $20 or even make one yourself for even less. And so while spinning with a drop spindle is a little bit more challenging than spinning with a wheel, spinning doesn't have to have a huge expense to get started with it. And so therefore I recommend just giving it a shot. Uh, I started spinning on a drop spindle and the first time I tried it did not go well so I stopped, waited like a year or so and tried again and then did a lot of spinning on the drop spindle before deciding I really wanted my own spinning wheel. 
And so that's how my journey got there. Now, I'm definitely not an expert spinner. I would say I'm maybe a confident beginner, advanced beginner. I don't even know if I'd put myself as an intermediate. There's a lot that I don't know, a lot that I have to learn. But I can confidently create yarn. <laughs> so that means that maybe I should give myself a little bit more credit. But I do really enjoy it. And I hope to, um, I mean, I keep saying this, but I hope to have some more spinning content here on the channel. I have just like a lot of things that <laughs> I have a lot of full bobbins that I need to transfer to Nitty Notties and just finish setting the twist. And for some reason, I keep putting that off. Uh, but that is something I hope to share more of. And I have some hand dyed roving that actually is from videos that came out a rather long time ago that I would like to spin myself. And so if that is something that you would like to see, please let me know down in the comments below. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.